Hi everyone, welcome back to the Getabury channel. So today we're in McAllister's Orchards in County Armagh. We're joined with uh, Davy U. Pritchard's kindly joined us. Um, Davy has his own cider company called Tempted Cider. And he also, well you've been involved in farming and well, been, selling of plants. I've been involved in growing for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then obviously Trevor's mad keen at cider production. So he's joined us for the, the day trip out here. So. Part of what we're wanting to do today is take you onto the farm and get some tips for home brewers. So, Davey, what would your top five tips be to home brewers making cider at home? Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Anybody that says that every bit of cider they've ever made is perfectly drinkable, uh, I think are telling little porkies. Uh, you'll always make a mistake, you'll always get a fault somewhere along the line. Persevere. Just keep trying, keep trying to make the best thing you do and keep everything clean. And you had mentioned when we were chatting earlier there that you grow, or not grow, that you would use two varieties, so ones that are rich in tannins and ones that are not so rich in tannins. What's the theory behind that? Basically, whenever whenever you're, you're taste, you taste a cider, uh, the more complex it is, generally speaking, the more bittersweet cider is going to be in it. Uh, bittersweet are a bit like a flavour battery. You add them to slightly blander, eaten apple style cider, uh, and you get a, 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 well, hopefully you get a good finished product. And pH is important for cider making as well. So what should people be aiming for before they start fermentation? And then equally, what should you be aiming for once fermentation is complete? Well, each apple will give you a juice that has a, a different pH. Bramley's could be anything down to 3.1, 3.2. Uh, something like uh, some of the very sweet apples that you get out of the supermarket if you were juicing some of those, uh, like for instance uh, Pink Lady, can produce juice anything up to 4.3. Uh, whenever you're fermenting your cider you want to try to get something around about the 3.8. Uh, that helps with the, the with a clean fermentation but it also makes the cider fairly drinkable at the, at the final process. So in relation to fermentation, yeast we find a clean uh, Nottingham Ale, AY um, 3 or 4 or again SO4 or even the Mangrove Jacks uh, cider yeast and, and moving on into champagne yeast. All we've had, like Trevor, you've had successful fermentations with them all. Mm -hmm. What's yeah. your go-to yeast? for? Well, my go-to go yeast is a low temperature tolerant champagne style yeast. I think it gives very clean flavours. Uh, a lot of people will use the wild yeast that's on the apple, in the apple. Um, that's fine, but you'll be prepared for some quite funky uh, finished product. So look, we're lucky in Northern Ireland here, we have Orchard County, which is County Armagh. So if you're watching this outside of here, like there's apples grown in Britain and all over Ireland. Any tips on sourcing apples? Well, I think, I think it's fair to say that, that Especially in the past few years, there's been a rise in maybe community uh, farms, community orchards, community projects. Um, there's a lot of people with apples in their garden, just let them fall to the, the ground and don't use them at all. If you, you, you put an advert in a garage, put an advert uh, in a paper or whatever, and I would say you get quite a lot of, of people uh, with an abundance of fruit at a certain time of the year. Um, Generally speaking, word of mouth. Most people know somebody that has uh, an apple tree. Uh, the problem is a lot of them will be Bramley's. So basically, if you can eat the apple, it'll make a reasonably decent cider. Bramley cider, mm, you might need a few rennies to go along with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So look, the last thing, last tip in relation to preparing the apples for the press, I've watched Trevor for a few years now, painfully using a pulp master bucket with a blade in it. Any tips for how to speed that process up? Shredding apples probably is one of the most soul destroying jobs that you'll ever find uh, in the cider making process. You're so keen to get the juice, you've got these lovely apples and it's, you know, how am I going to get it out? Find somebody, talk to any, anybody that makes cider, uh, see if there's any way at all a cooperative can buy uh, an electric shredder. Uh, if, you ha if, if you had one group uh, that was prepared to fork it out, I don't know, there, there may be 
thousand there, pounds. Yeah, there, you know, there's a lot of money involved, 700, 800, 900 pounds. Yeah. But um, I have one that I used to use whenever we used a big, uh, a big hydraulic press. Uh, that can be hired out for the weekend if it's ever needed. Uh, Dave is going to give us a look around the farm, around the pressing facility and processing here. Um, we're going to chat a bit about apple varieties, taste some apples and uh, until next time, happy brewing. Thank you.